presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. Hallelujah Heaven comes to fight
what's behind my back um your hands yes but guess what's in my hands uh carpal bones metal carpal bones and phalanges no not what's inside my hands guess what i'm holding in my hands an object yes guess what it is okay do you know what's in your hands i sure do then why do you need my help it's a game just guess um a lawnmower no was i warm not even close uh how about a pinball machine 
It's a peach. It's just a regular old peach, okay? You're right. That was fun. We are Connect HQ. Every day we help the people of the world live God's way. We look for the links, make the connection, and you never know what might happen. My name is Edison, and this is the time I shared my story. There he is. You have a visitor. Hey, what's up, man? I guess I don't need to make any introductions. It's good to see you. Trey and I have been friends since kindergarten. But ever since you moved out here, I don't get to see you much. Glad we reconnected. Uh, how's your family? Good, good. They're still trying to get me to clean up my act, but you know me. So what brings you by, Trey? Edison offered to help me fix something. Is it finished? Ah, it is. It's in my locker. Cool. Uh-oh. What did I do? It's not you. We're getting a call from one of our field offices. Looks like it's from New York. Hey guys, I'm back in the USA. It's been so amazing going all around the world, seeing all the amazing things that God is doing. But it's also nice to be back. I can't wait to get back to Connect HQ. I stopped off at our Central Park office and they wanted me to share this problem with you guys. They got this postcard yesterday. It says, Dear Connect HQ, I have this friend that makes fun of me sometimes for going to church or saying that I love Jesus. What do I tell them? Love, Lily. I had some ideas, but I was hoping that you guys can help me with a connection transmission that will let Lily know exactly what to do. I love you guys. See you soon. Hmm, that's a good question. What do you think, Edison? What should Lily say to her friend? Oh, uh, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure she'll figure it out. Sure, with our help, we can always find her a link and help her not be embarrassed about her love for Jesus. Uh, I would, I would love to help out, but I gotta help Trey, so, um, best of luck to you. Come on, Trey. Best of luck? Is that a new bike helmet? Yep. Making it nice and reflective so people can see me at night. Hey Luke, have you ever been made fun of because of your beliefs? Well, sometimes people ignore me when I invite them to church or give me funny looks. Even my own family is sometimes mean about the things that I believe in. Why, was someone mean to you? No, I was helping Ray with the postcard. Oh, she's back? Well, back in the country. She called in from New York. You know, whenever I feel like someone's trying to embarrass me for what I believe in, I remember this verse in the book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 16. Say it with me like this. Romans 1, 16. Romans 1, 16. For I am not ashamed of this good news about Christ. For I am not ashamed of this good news about Christ. It is the power of God at work. It is the power of God at work. Saving everyone who believes. Saving everyone who believes. I'm not embarrassed because God has done so much for me, and I won't hide that. I want everyone I meet to know that God gave me my testimony. Testimony? A uh, testimony is the true story of what God has done for you and how following Jesus has changed you. Now, what do you think? It's really bright. <laughs> Hide it under a bushel? No, I'm gonna let it shine. And not only was I able to fix it, I also added this button. What does it do? It automatically upgrades your entire inventory. Man, Edison, you think of everything. Thanks for fucking me up. I love helping out my friends. You know, I could always get my brother to put you on his company. He works with people all the time that are not half as talented as you are. And you'd be super rich. Just imagine, your gadgets in every home with your name on it. But I work here. 
Yeah, and because you work here, you're not famous. Plus, the people around here, they're, what's the word? Churchy. That's the mission. But, if you work for my brother, it wouldn't be Jesus this and God that. They just focus on the real stuff. Real stuff, but I kind of like it. What? Like it here? No way. I've known you since kindergarten, and you've never mentioned anything about Jesus. You can't be that important. I mean, I... I guess I can see what you're saying. I mean, when you really think about it, this is all just pretend. <laughs> Edison, come check this out. I think we found the Bible link. And that's my cue to go. I'll see you soon, and thanks for fixing my controller. Oh, and... Don't forget what I told you, okay? What was that about? Trey thinks I should get a job less churchy. His words, not mine. Well, did you explain to him that you like working here? Kinda, but he doesn't believe in Jesus. Edison, does he really know your story? Why you ended up here? How God changed your life? I don't think it would change anything. Well, it changed things for Paul. Here, check this out. This is the story about the God who loves us in the Bible. We find truth and purpose to love God and love others. We're searching God's word for things to discover. This book is alive, full of answers and godly advice. This book is alive. is alive. Way back in Bible times, God picked a man named Paul to be the first one to spread the good news about Jesus with the world outside of God's people in Israel. He shared God's love by starting churches everywhere he went. But not everybody liked that Paul told people about God. The Pharisees, the religious leaders in Bible times, felt threatened by the message of Jesus. They arrested Paul and put him in prison. But God used Paul in that situation too. While on trial, Paul was allowed to give his testimony to some important Roman rulers. His testimony is the true story of what God has done for him personally. O oh, great rulers, my name is Paul. This is the story of what God has done for me. When I was little, I was trained in all the customs and ways of how to worship God. I loved God more than anyone you could find. But I didn't believe that Jesus Christ was God. So I did everything I could to stop the news about Jesus from spreading. When I was on the road to arrest some Christians, God showed me Jesus was God by personally sending Jesus to meet me. Jesus told me that he would use my testimony to spread his message throughout the world. I did what Jesus asked and preached the good news about him instead of going against him. I traveled everywhere Jesus told me to go. But there were others who wanted to stop the message about Jesus from spreading just like I used to. They tried to attack me and hurt me. They lied and accused me of breaking the law. But God protected me so I could continue to preach the good news about Jesus. And now I'm preaching that to you today. Paul's story made the rulers think about the story of Jesus. They decided not to put him to death. Instead, Paul was sent to the ancient capital of the world, Rome, so he could tell his testimony to Caesar. He continued to tell the story of what Jesus had done for him everywhere he went. Some people hated Paul, or even thought he was out of his mind. But that didn't stop him from telling people his testimony. Sometimes it's scary sharing Jesus with people. 
You're right. It's not always easy. But if Trey is really your friend, he needs to know your story, even the Jesus parts. I'm going to see if I can catch him before he gets too far. Dear God, help Edison share his story. And I just thought it would be a real shame if you left without seeing our observatory. Here it is. Cool, man. Cool. And um, I was thinking about what you said earlier. Are you going to leave? You said if I stopped to think about it, I would have realized that this is all pretend. <laughs> this God stuff isn't real. But it's real to me. When I think about it, God is the only real thing in my life. But what about the- Please, let me finish. I know I haven't been on this earth long, but God has changed my life. You might not believe in him, but I do. Why? You are so smart. God has moved in my life. You, you remember when my dad got sick? The only reason why I felt any peace was because God was right there beside me, giving me comfort. But that's what you believe. I exactly. It's not pretend. I believe God is in my life. I, I, even though I lost my dad, I still have a heavenly father. I believe he sent his son Jesus to wipe away my sins, and so I could be friends with him. And I believe he knows your name too, and he has a plan for you. You used to never talk like this. It used to be just video games and stuff. But I can see this really matters to you. And I just wanted you to know my story so you can understand why I love working here and you could know the Jesus I know. Thanks for fixing my controller. Hope I see you soon. Yeah. God, thank you for the story you've written in my life. Thank you for never giving up on me. Help Trey to understand you'll never give up on him. Amen. Hey Harper, guess what I have behind my back? A peach. You know, this game isn't fun anymore. Did you catch him? I did, but I'm not sure how it went. I'm not even sure we're still friends. Well, did you share your story? I did. I told him how much God has changed my life. Well, you planted a seed. Now all you can do is keep being a great friend, keep praying, and trust God will work in Trey's heart. I've got to say, it felt good sharing my whole story with Trey. And I think I know the point link. People learn about Jesus when I share how he helped me. Point link acquired. People learn about Jesus when I share how he helped me. That is a great reminder. You know, I should call my family and share how Jesus helped me today. What is it? It's Trey. He texted me. He says he wants to play video games this weekend. He's still my friend. That's awesome. I should get this connection transmission to Ray. Actually, if you don't mind, I'd like to do it. I'm feeling charged up from sharing my story. It's all yours. Thanks. I like Charged Edison. I haven't seen him this excited since we showed him jelly donuts. Hi, I'm Edison, and I'm a part of Connect HQ. We found an answer for you. The Bible tells us this in the book of Romans. Say it with me like this. Romans 1.16 For I am not ashamed of this good news about Christ. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes. Believing in Jesus isn't something we should be embarrassed about. When God does something amazing in your life, of course, that's something you want to share, no matter what other people think. Are you familiar with the story of Paul from the Bible? He set a good example for us to follow by sharing his testimony even though the people around him didn't believe in Jesus. Some people even hated him or made fun of him. But that didn't stop him from sharing the story of how Jesus changed his life. If you follow Jesus, you have a story or a testimony of how God changed your life. You don't have to be afraid to share your story because the people around you need to hear it. They need to hear what God has done in your life. The Bible tells us our story is very powerful. It is a unique story that God only gave us and only we can share it. When we share it, people learn the truth about God and it encourages them to follow Jesus. People learn about Jesus when I share how he helped me. Be proud of the story God gave you, and don't be scared to share it. 
I hope that helps. And thanks for your question. Remember, Connect HQ is here to help you.